Hi everyone, I'm Vivek Atre, and today I have a very special guest for this vibrant forum conversation. And the special guest is Nina Angelovska, all the way from Macedonia. And she's a multifaceted, charming lady. Uh, she has a lot of accomplishments already in a young career. And it's a delight to have you here, Nina. Hi, Vivek. Hi to everyone watching this. Uh, it's a pleasure to, uh, to be here today to talk to you uh, virtually, of course. And yes. uh, thank you for, for all the kind words. And the first time we met was at a very important platform of Horasis, which is the multi-dimensional international forum where I was moderating a discussion on diversity and uh, Nina was one of the speakers, a key speaker, and it was a wonderful session, which all of you can watch uh, later. We will share the link of that also. And there were three other ladies, all of them with diverse backgrounds. And I was a lucky moderator. And today I must say, Nina, I'm the lucky interviewer and uh, I have some questions for you. So are you ready to um, receive them? Of course, uh, I'm looking forward to our, let's say, free flow discussion, guided and moderated this time uh, uh, as an interview with you. Yes. And Nina, of course, I may have mentioned it last time. My wife's name is also Nina. So it makes me very comfortable to say the word Nina because I keep saying it all the time. So I don't mispronounce your name. And it's a very sweet and simple name also. <laughs> okay. Here we go. So now... Yes? Yeah, yeah, feel free to continue. I would agree on that. Thank you. Right. So basically, Nina, I want to know how you become such an icon so early in life and how you've achieved all that you have with entrepreneurship, politics, leadership, I see your posts on LinkedIn. Some of them are in English. Some of them are not in English. So I get confused, but I see your picture. I see the energy. You are on stage many times. And uh, you have been telling me that uh, after your very busy political stint and other things, now you're trying to balance your life already. So in a nutshell, how has the journey been so successful already? Yeah, thank you for the intro and thank you for the question. Um... I think that there are many factors or many things that contributed uh, into my journey or me being where I am. I think, uh, you know, there is a study that says that 85%, I think, of our uh, brain develops until the age of five. So I think that if we go back and start from the beginning, I was lucky enough to be, to have the genes, let's say the entrepreneurial genes that are running into my family. And I was lucky enough to have the home growing that I had. Uh, so basically, since I was very little, my mother taught me that knowledge is the most important thing that no one can take away from us, that I need to embrace knowledge, that I need to be thirsty uh, to end, to try to be best at whatever I decide to do in life. Uh, so I, I would say that I was lucky enough to find my passion and my interest during my studies. I uh, graduated a uh, student of the year on the Faculty of Economics. The department was a very newly introduced department, e-business. And I think that this was uh, the place where I developed the passion uh, and, uh, let's say, the drive for e-commerce, digitalization, um, e-business. Uh, so basically, I was dedicated into, um, into embracing as much knowledge as I can. And then um, I... I, I it was the same year when I graduated. Um, I took part in a business, most innovative business plan competition was the title of this competition. I think I'm competitive by nature. And, uh, and then I, uh, I won there and I got a small grant to start my business. So I think that this was the, maybe the key incentive on how I uh, embarked on my entrepreneurial journey when I was 22. So basically, I graduated when I was 21. I got this check. Uh, it was a big check with a lot of digits. But, you know, the Macedonian dollar wow. compared to the euro is like 1 to 60. <laughs> so it was not a lot of money, although it looked like a lot of money at, at that time. <laughs> and uh, this is when I uh, when I launched um, Grouper. So Grouper um, is the leading e-commerce company in North Macedonia that I uh, co-founded with two partners in uh, 2011. It was a time when e-commerce was practically non-existent or barely existing in uh, in Macedonia. It was a new field. And if you have asked many of the people or if we took a look at the business plans, uh, I think that 
uh, you would say that it was not the right timing, but we were enthusiastic that we will drive the change, that we will change the market. And this is actually what we did. We were recognized as the game changer. We educated thousands of people uh, on how to make their first online transaction. We, we uh, helped hundreds of merchants to embrace and to start selling online because we are we, Rupert is practically an intermediary uh, that uh, connects end buyers uh, and provides discounts and good deals to the merchants who are promoting the products. So I'm, I'm sure that we will have more time to speak uh, into details about the business and stuff. But basically how I got into it was uh, uh, finding what I loved doing, uh, the genes, the home growing, basically combined with lots of uh, knowledge and education and always, you know, trying to, to embrace and to keep wondering for, for things, for new things, for technology, for digital, for, for e-commerce and then directing this passion and hard work and things that I've learned into establishing a business, which proved to be a very successful one, also internationally recognized. And uh, then I was, I was actually running the company for, for 10 years until, as you mentioned in the introduction, until I was invited to join the government. So then my career path took a pretty sharp turn. Uh, yes. I didn't come in, I never had let's say I never aspired to go into politics or to join the government. So this was a big surprise to me. Uh, mm -hmm. So basically um, I have the entrepreneurial journey. I had the, the let's say the, the opportunity to, uh, to go into and see the other side, the private sector. So this is the government sector and somewhere mm -hmm. on the road, I also had the chance to uh, to be part of the non-government sector when I launched the uh, Macedonian e-commerce association in 2017. And basically all these things are, are let's say, uh, one thing is intersected and similar for all of them. And this is that the main motive for all these things was the desire to change things, to improve things, to fix things, to drive change wherever I could. So with Grouper yes. is to drive and change the e-commerce market with the NGO in the association was to try to impact on a bigger level, improve or make the path easier for the others as well. And with the government, it was a very difficult decision when I was invited to join the government uh, by the prime minister Zoran Zaev at that time. It was a very big, uh, let's say, a very big surprise and a very difficult decision for me. But the main motive to accept this decision is this similarity that it was an opportunity to try to make a change from the yes. inside. Yeah. That's very well said, Nina. You have put everything in uh, one answer, but I'm going to ask you more questions and you will have to give more details. Yeah. But I think you're using beautiful language, especially I like the word embrace because you are embracing different kinds of opportunities. You are embracing different kinds of people, different kinds of uh, diversities. And uh, also the new era is being... Uh, is being identified as one where young people and diverse populations can succeed. But before I come to the business part and later in the show, we will have some fun with some personal questions. But I want to ask you about your education, which made you this. Obviously, the genes are there. But what was it in your education? Were you so outstanding in school and college? Your English is so impeccable. I mean, in India, we learn English from the age of two or three. But in many countries, it is difficult and uh, you, you have to learn your own language a lot. So how did you become such a bright, uh, educated youth, young person to take on the world? What was it in your education that really helped you? You know, I think that um, the educational system, uh, of course, is there to, to teach us. And it's, let's say, the same for if we are a group of 300 students, it's the same, uh, the same book, the same teacher, the same for everything. And yet yeah. we don't go out with the same knowledge gained uh, during our studies or schooling or whatever. So I think that um, I, was, uh, I was thirsty to get the most out of it. I didn't, when I started at the, at, the, at the faculty, I didn't see it coming that I would get so interested into so many things. I was even teaching uh, mathematics, web design and statistics uh, during my studies as a, a teaching assistant or demonstrator is the Macedonian word. I don't think there is a proper 
proper uh, yes, yeah, we use it also yes so i i think as a uh and a great deal of this me loving uh learning uh and uh education is uh i i, I owe it to my mother so i think that this was uh i you know always in business what motivates us is the results when you see the result you forget all the hours of a sleepless nights and hard work and for the education it was that i was always first on the list uh when when we were had an exam or and this was what motivated me that i'm getting the best grades and oh, wow. uh, to to be to be uh better next time and i somehow in even all subjects that we were learning that not all were related to things that we love let's say or in, uh, have an interest at the moment i didn't think and this is also i think an advice that i give to many young people i didn't think if i love it at the moment or not i just had to learn it uh because this was part of the program when we were studying so lately you don't have to go too much deeper into the topics you're not so much interested at the moment but i was ready to get interested uh on, on all the things when when needed uh so i would say that um it's uh then uh, a, a a part of this educational journey uh i continued my master thesis i launched the company and then while i was running the company i did my master thesis and later on i also did my phd uh and it was a very difficult period for me to juggle and to do all the work and do all the uh yeah and work on the phd during uh, weekends and evenings and miss and sacrifice some time with friends and going out uh but uh, after after i got the phd degree it was the most awarding feeling and i suddenly forgot about all those uh all those things as i said about the struggles so uh i think yeah i think the key is to find what we love to do and that's how we want to invest more time in it want to learn uh that's how we learn easier yes. let's things and then uh, get better at it and uh of course in order to be successful in something we have to want to become better at it so i think that this this is the let's say the catch it's a very inspiring answer that you're giving what i liked in that is the word thirsty you see when you say thirsty that means that you are more thirsty than everybody else you are keen to learn even those subjects which are not so good for you or not very comfortable but they are part of the plan and you I mean, said that you know it was the same just a quick uh, comment it was the same uh, when we were developing the business practically because you know yeah. as a young entrepreneur i mean it's it's really difficult to be an entrepreneur um it takes a lot of uh yeah. hard work learning passion solving problems especially and on this path i had to juggle with many different fields and roles that like i didn't maybe know too much about legal uh, framework and regulation or about finance or hr and if you compare it with studying it was practically an obstacle standing on my way that i had to learn about those things in order to solve the the problem and to basically remove this rock that is standing on our way to success so it's the yes. same with life if we compare it you know there are a lot of home obligations that we need to do like who wants to wash to wash dishes but you you just <laughs> don't think of it and that's a thing that you need to do as part of life is the same for studying is the same for business so i think it's it's about the perception and the attitude you actually answered half of my next question about business but i want to ask you um, you know there's a different quality required to succeed as a business person you may be very good you may be very strong you may be a phd you may be knowledgeable but sometimes we have to be like cutthroat you have to be like never say die i will not give up until the result is achieved so the determination the perseverance and as you said there are times when things are difficult they seem to be impossible you may feel like giving up at times but somehow you did not and grouper did very well your other career your now what you're doing is also taking off so what is that x factor that you think you have which has enabled you to succeed in business we're not talking about the politics part yet and they called you in the government only because you were doing well in your career in business i mean that was one of the reasons i i'm sure and of course you were an outstanding personality but what is that x factor that you have nina which gives you that success 
I don't know if we can call it an X factor if, or if there is an X factor. Maybe there is a combination of many things, but definitely one thing that we didn't mention, we mentioned uh, perseverance, hard work, dedication, commitment, uh, passion, and all these things. Uh, they're also, I think that uh, is, is the, maybe the right word is luck, but also things need to, we need to be well combined in the right timing. But I like the saying, they, they say that luck is when preparedness meets opportunity. So I think yes. that we were always prepared to, to embrace changes and that we were lucky to find the problems we love solving in life because wherever we go, there will be problems, there will be obstacles, there is no escaping problems. But the key is how we perceive problems and stress and how we deal with that and do we enjoy solving those problems. So I think uh, it's very important to find the problems we love solving in, in life. And uh, to go back to your initial question about, let's say, giving up and that you need to stay and not uh, give up, I think it's yeah. important uh, that if you have all these things, if you love what you do and everything that I already mentioned, not to repeat, that uh, that motivates you and that the results are motivation that keep you the, that keep you going. But as much as I believe that it's important not to give up, I also believe that it's important to know when to give up. Because if there is no success and if there are no results and you're investing lots of effort, uh, then you're probably not directing your efforts into the right direction. And then in that case, it's important to know to give up. It's important to know to fail and to stand up and to try something else. It's comparing to let's say a simple practical just to give you a metaphorical uh, let's say to, to put this metaphor into a real life situation is like you know th there are uh, people that i've worked with colleagues and they would say yeah i know there are no results but i've worked for this so hard and uh and this is a discussion that we are having uh if i'm not recognizing the hard work that has been given and i always ex try to explain that uh if there are no results you don't recognize the hard work because you are putting maybe the hard work into into something that is not giving results so it's not only to put the efforts but it's also to put the right efforts and it's more important maybe to work smart in certain cases rather than to work uh hard so i would say that to sum it up it's important of course to stay committed to put hard work and passion and not to give up to solve problems but it's also important to know if that's the case, when to give up and not waste more more years into yes. that. So, uh, so I I don't know if there is an X factor. I don't. Uh, I think that maybe my family or my friends can comment on that because I don't think that uh, I'm not a big fan of speaking about myself and my my yeah. my personal. I, yeah, I can understand you are humble as well. But what I can say is that you do have an X factor. I can say it because I've talked to you a few times. But we don't know what it is. And it's not necessary to know exactly what it is as long as doing well. But I want to ask you, uh, because we are already more than halfway in the interview. I want to ask you about young women across the world. Because you are an icon in many ways for them. If they know more about you in India, in Asia, in other countries... Many of them would like to emulate many of the qualities that you have. So what are the one or two things that especially young women aspiring to do well in life should be doing? Uh, yeah, that's a that's a, a very good, but also very, let's say, difficult question. Now we are speaking globally and I'm always uh, trying to, uh, let's say, encourage young women because I think that the growth of our economies is at stake because we are not encouraging and we are seeing uh the w potential of women not being utilized at all on a global level and this is happening for decades and the progress is too slow and i'm trying to impact on this field as well as an uh um that uh e-trade for women ambassador i've been there with for for two years is the united nations yes. conference on trade and development program uh, that is yes. trying to foster digital women entrepreneurs in digital uh, economy and I have had the chance to speak with lots of uh, girls and women across the, the globe in the past years uh, of while I was working in the company then the government and everywhere and I think that uh, I think that we what what girls should do there is always the question what ecosystem should do what government should do what parents should do 
and it's it's not a simple answer on what we can do and what I can change. What we can do from our uh, point of view is to learn as much as you can, to keep yes. wondering, to be uh, more ambitious, uh, to try to prove yourself because unfortunately we are still living in a man's world, although digitalization offers much more opportunities for a more equal world, still in this digital world is male dominated and it's yes. a fact that women need to work harder, need to prove themselves more. And um, and for me, uh, it was always, uh, you know, yeah, that makes us more stronger and more, more knowledgeable because at the moment, if I cannot change it, uh, it's the question what I can do now about myself. So what, what we can do is uh, to prove ourselves, to, um, you know, try to make a change, try to show, um, try to gain as much skills as possible. At least nowadays it's, uh, it's more easy to get uh, and learn new things uh, online uh, and to learn from any, anyone wherever we go. Uh, so I, I would say that uh, there are a lot of things that we need to see a change uh, so that women can contribute in the economy and can uh, feel equal. And it's not right as that the world is still not equal. Uh, but, uh, you know, we need to, uh, to be optimistic as well uh, and to, 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 to try to give our best on the way. And if we can change something, then try to, uh, to change. So even, even smaller things, if I uh, manage to encourage or motivate or help young girls and women with uh, the mentoring that I have provided or something, that's something that I feel that I'm trying to do to contribute. So I think that with small steps, we can achieve bigger uh, results. But we need to understand that these small steps matter, actually. Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, uh, that's lovely. Well said. What I like about your communication is that it comes from the heart. And I can see and I have a saying in my public speaking classes that what comes from the heart goes to the heart. Because when you're speaking passionately about something, it is obviously more convincing than just, you know, from the surface. But I, I have only about five minutes more to go. So I have three or four questions. So I'm going to request you one minute answers for the rest of them. One of them I have is, in your political time, or even otherwise, how did you handle stress? I mean, supposing there is a time when you're stressed out, you're, you're human after all. Even if you look pretty perfect, you are pretty good at your work, you are uh, obviously doing very well, but after all, you're human. How do you handle stress? So shortly, uh, because you gave me one minute to answer, uh, I, have, <laughs> I, I will try to zip it even in less. I think Don't that be stressed I, out on the one minute. <laughs> I was uh, programmed uh, and I expected that there will be stressful situations. Of course, I didn't see COVID coming, which added even yeah, more yeah. to yeah. these stressful situations and decision making, uh, big decisions that needed to be uh, made fast. Uh, yeah, there were stressful situations, of course, but I think uh, the answer would be it's important uh, what, what I can do is change how I perceive stress. So I was programmed even in the business to eat problems for breakfast, that this is something that is part of the of the game. And yeah. uh, you, need to, you need to change your attitude towards stress and how you perceive it and how you, you solve it. So basically, I, 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 to be honest, I missed doing sports a lot because I meant long, long hours. Mm -hmm. I was there for one year. From nowadays perspective, it looks like 10 years to me. And um, yes, and then you you overcome the situation. There is a solution you find and then you forget about it. And and it uh, it has to go in and go out. Uh, the important thing is that how we how we perceive it. So I think that it's... That's well said as well. So my next question is, how do you balance your life? So you're working. And as we were discussing, perhaps you have more time now for yourself. I mean, after all, we need to have work-life balance with family, with friends, with yourself, maybe meditation, maybe sports, maybe enjoyment, travel. So what is your balancing act? Uh, sports, definitely out of these things. Uh, so I'm, um, I, I, I love sports. I'm, an, I'm, an, uh, I'm running. 
uh, I am uh, hiking, I'm biking, I'm combining different uh, sports so that I don't get tired from one. But I would say that the thing I love about sports is the feeling after, is the, yes. the endorphins. And, uh, and I, I do enjoy uh, while I'm uh, doing sports. But I, uh, I very much enjoy a good meal and good food and a good glass of wine after it because I feel that I've deserved it. And this is the case with many things, not, jo- not only sports and, and food. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I think that sports are very important. I think that it's uh, not only about, uh, about how we uh, look or feel, it's about health, but also it's about the brains and the productivity. And uh, I think that uh, doing sports and being committed to it, it's one of the, let's say, mutual things to many uh, great minds and successful uh, people. And I think it's, it's the discipline is important, but it's also to find the activities that you love doing so that you're enjoying the part uh, of doing sports as well. I totally agree. I am a total sports lover and I totally agree. After sports, you feel so good about the workout. The endorphins are released and uh, that feeling is just amazing. But quickly running to another one, which is what or who inspires you the most in your life? I mean, who has inspired you? I think uh, this is a no-brainer for me that my mother is my, let's say, life mentor coach uh, that directed me in the right direction since I was little. Of course, I mentioned uh, that I was grown uh, with entrepreneurial spirit and I have to mention my father, whose genes and home growing also played a role more into the business-wise uh, part of me. Uh, my mother was a combination, let's say, also about business, but also about uh, education um, a lot. So uh, definitely, uh, she's my, my muse and, and uh, inspiration. And um, I, uh, I, yes, I think that... Uh, with, with this, for instance, I was uh, interviewing uh, recently some amazing women uh, that are part of the Jungta Eat Rate for Women program. And I found out that for most of them, uh, this, uh, this is a mutual characteristic, the role of, that their mothers played in their life. So I think that, yes, uh, yes. so it's, it's, it's the, case, uh, the case for me as well. No, no, I'm sure your mother, my mother, I remember, is so inspiring and yours must be and you know, it's lovely to go. Um, but I'm adding always because she said that what you have here, no one can take away. And now today's, from today's perspective, I say what you have here, uh, yeah, in, in our brains, but also what we have here in terms of yes. the passion and love for things uh, to do are two things that no one can take away from us. So it's important to find absolutely what makes absolutely. our heart. Yeah, absolutely. I have a couple of very quick ones. What or who makes you laugh the most in life? Who makes you laugh the most or what makes you laugh the most? Uh, who? I would say that there are, um, I, uh, there are different situations and different, uh, uh, let's say, moods when which people are making me laugh. Uh, I'm enjoying uh, with my family, with my father, my mother, and my sister. I am... Uh, also enjoying with uh, uh, with the, the, the good laughs with my friends. Uh, so what? Who? There are a lot of people that make me laugh, and that's why they are part of my life. And what? <laughs> I would say, uh, good jokes that make me laugh, like each and every one of us, and um, certain situations. But I, 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 there is a type of of uh, of, uh, of humor that uh, we are most triggered to. And I think that I would say it's the same for you that uh, the, the the smarter one or the more intelligent one is the one that is more funny, funny to me. Yeah. So yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, absolutely. I did so it well, but me, I yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Last question is, uh, you know, what is that magical moment that you're looking for in your life? Is there a magical moment or is there a big achievement that you're still waiting for? Uh, I don't know if I believe in magic. Uh, I, I always say that there is no magic when, want in life, that we need to work for it hard and uh, that things will come uh, in their place. So I was always, even in the business, uh, even in, in private life, I've never chased anything. Basically, things organically came to me and I was just ready to embrace the opportunities. So I I think that uh, whenever you're trying to push something, you're 
to, to pull something, it, you're throwing it more and more away from you. So I believe that things will come into place that I, I'm lucky enough not to, to have no regrets for the past. If I could do anything all over uh, the past 15 years, uh, I wouldn't change any of my decisions because this is what made me today. This is uh, who I am. And it's all part of our our journey. So for the future, I'm also looking forward to make decisions that I won't have regrets like I don't have so far, and that they are they're gonna make me happier, better person. There's there's no magic, but there is a lot of different uh, things that we are probably all looking forward to. Lovely interview, Nina Angelovska. We really enjoyed. I really enjoyed it. I'm sure everyone's going to love this interview. And uh, what I really like is, of course, three E's, I will say, the energy, the enthusiasm, and the word embrace, which you use so fluently. And that really shows the philosophy of life that you have. My uh, good wishes to you. And uh, let us keep spreading sunshine and happiness wherever we go. Thank you very much, Vivek. It was a pleasure. <laughs>